this morning comes from the Passion of Christ in the Gospel of Luke, selected readings from chapter 23. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. (coughs) Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and he said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have found this man guilty, not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found him in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminal, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourselves. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw that what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. The word of the Lord. Are y'all ready to party? I hope you've uh, had a chance to look at the invitations in uh, the bulletin. Uh, Once a date and time are set, we will be sure and get that information out to you. Um, You see, when I was growing up, you didn't have parties at graduations, but 
But rather than lament the past, I decided to plan my own graduation party. And I had so much fun planning this thing, I didn't want to wait till I had a date and time set before I invited you all to attend. So I hope you will come. Um, it's a celebration of all that I love, family, faith, and friends. And this is a celebration for all ages. There will be, uh, it'll be held in the social hall. There'll be food and fun for everyone. And of course, at the tables, everyone, there will be set up little sets of puzzle pieces, right? You all remember this from our meet and greets? Everyone will have a little set of puzzle pieces to put together. And I've, you can see I've already picked out the puzzle and have the, I already have them put in their little uh, baggies so we can get this puzzle together. See, I'll let you all see that there. So I've been hard at work at this game. I've been, I've been working on this, let me tell you. So um, in addition, um, there will be a puppet show hosted by none other than Ether Bunet. And uh, Ether is coming out of retirement. He's been had a kind of a hard time in the box there, but uh, he'll be ready to host this uh, puppet show. And you will see, and indeed you already got to see, uh, one of my favorite puppet shows. Again, a story that I knew as a child, we were able to turn into a puppet skit called The Pine Tree. But the real fun begins when another puppet who hears that story of the pine tree, Herman, here, decides he wants to tell it to a friend. So he makes his own pine tree, and he gets to tell it to a friend. Of course, everything's disastrous and turns out wrong, but that's where the real fun begins. So you don't want to miss it. And you can bring your grandkids as cover so they think you're bringing the kids, and you can come, you can come see the, the, show, the story of the pine tree as told by Herman. So... Um, but that's not all. There will also be a, um, a slideshow of lots of pictures, including my days as an alligator wrestler, uh, as you can see right here in your invitation. Uh, all will be explained. You will hear the truth. And yes, that is me in that picture. Can't open it. And that is a live alligator on the end of that rope. Hear all about my alligator wrestling days. Although I, I, the truth will be told. Although I've, if I said many times, I just never thought the truth added much to a story. But anyways, you'll get the lowdown on my alligator days. There will be skits, live performances at this party, including a Hayward original, the skit about the giant six-foot mosquito. You'll have to see it. There's no way to explain that one. But there's no need explaining the game of Jeopardy. We will have a rousing round of Jeopardy. The youth played this to start their confirmation class downstairs. It's the real thing. It's shot up on a video screen, video projector screen, uh, and it's got all the little uh, uh, little puppies you got to pick, and it's it's great. And there will be such questions, or excuse me, answers, such as this one, January second. 1962. You can't answer that one. The question is, when is Will's birthday? <laughs> hey, it's my party, right? So, you know. And I just gave you one of the answers, so you can just get in fast on the clicker and you'll, you'll have a jump on everyone else, so. Uh, and of course, no graduation party would be complete without music, and there will be music. The tentative plan is to have my player piano brought here, um, and we'll roll it right up that handicap ramp. Wait a minute, well, we'll figure that out. But uh, <laughs> we'll roll that in here, and you can come to this party and hear such uh, uh, ragtime greats play is, is Steve Price or uh, uh, I'm sorry Rick Price or Steve Murphy man these guys can tear this piano up let me tell you you won't believe what they can do with a player piano or anyone can do pump the bellows you know so this is a tentative plan however um, I have the piano I haven't exactly rebuilt it yet <laughs> uh, I was able to move it down here but it's in the pieces are, uh, of it are in boxes so hopefully I'll have it together whether or not the piano is in one piece, the party is a go. And once we have the date and time set, we'll let you know. 
And to round out this event, there'll be perhaps my favorite activity of all, storytelling. So bring, come and bring your favorite stories. They don't have to be about me, just your favorite stories. You'll hear two of mine, two of my favorites. You will hear the latest from Lithia. Now, I haven't told you any of my Lithia stories, but you'll hear about my colleague in ministry, Percival Wiebelmeyer, who is the pastor down at the Fort Lonesome Presbyterian Church. <laughs> you make it sound like it's fiction. Down in um, Lithia, Florida, and you hear all about his plans for his graduation party and how all his carefully laid out designs will, of course, go completely awry. Nothing will go as planned, and it will be great fun. But you will also hear another, probably my favorite story of all, the story of the lost gingerbread man. And it's one of my favorites because it really is a true story. But you have to come to the party to hear these stories. So I hope you come. I hope you come and and to this party to hear these stories and to celebrate my graduation. Come and enjoy the good food and company. Come to share your favorite stories. Come to enjoy what I think graduation parties are all about. A graduation party at its best is a celebration about all that is good about life and our best hope for the future. So friends, I am excited about the future. If this party goes as I have planned it, it will be one grand celebration. So I hope you take the time to come and join the festivities once the uh, date and time are set. And once you do, once you're here, be sure and tell everybody hello for me. Well, friends, I'm not planning to attend this party. In fact, I couldn't attend even if I wanted to. In truth, I wouldn't attend even if I could. Now, if you haven't figured it out already, I will not be able to attend my own graduation party for one simple reason. I will be dead. And I wouldn't attend even if I could for another very simple reason. I've got a better offer. You see, I realized something a while back. As I was studying the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem for yet another Palm Sunday, an awe-inspiring truth struck me. This event, the truth is that this journey that we call Palm Sunday is a funeral procession. Jesus is on his way to die. The disciples, of course, know about this, even if they don't fully understand it. And yet Jesus has told them that he is on his way to die. But this procession is not uh, some kind of somber dirge. There will be lamentations later, of course. After all, the death always involves the pain of separation, even when our faith assures us that that separation is not permanent. Yet this procession into Jerusalem is a celebration. The disciples of Jesus are celebrating a life full of powerful deeds and their shared hope, our shared hope, for the future when he will be king. The, this procession of celebration is the inspiration for the preparation of my expiration. In other words, as I plan Palm Sunday, I plan my funeral. I don't want a mournful dirge. I want a party, a graduation party, a celebration of the gift of life, and the beginning of my new life in Jesus Christ. This graduation party is my paradigm, my model of how I hope to face death. Now, when a child graduates from high school, a parent can, and some do, simply mourn the loss of their child to adulthood. And yet, for most of us, graduations from school are also a time of celebration. 
despite the transitions and change that come with graduation, the hope we have of a blessed future allows us to celebrate the past and look forward to the future. So too, the hope of the future in Jesus Christ after death frees us to celebrate life and hope for the next life instead of being overwhelmed by death. We do not know the particulars of what the next life will bring. But we know that it will start with one tremendous party around the banquet table of God in the kingdom of heaven. Like I said earlier, I am excited about the future. And I want to share that excitement and hope for the future after I die in a graduation celebration, a party to celebrate life and hope. One more request, though, at my graduation celebration. You may recall the story I told uh, several months ago about my mother, who took broken pieces of pottery and put them in the foundation of her remodeled home. My mom wanted to give those future archaeologists uh, a, a mystery uh, to ponder when they excavated her home in the distant future. And I never forgot that lesson. I never forgot that lesson my mom taught me. It, she made it clear that she knew everything changes. Mom understood that nothing is permanent in this world, yet her faith gave her the strength to willingly accept the passing of all things, including life itself, and the full hope of graduating to a new life in a new world. Well, I've got this clay dish that my mother made my mother the potter made this dish. And this is my request. At my graduation party, I ask that you take this dish and smash it into a thousand pieces. And then gather up all those pieces and put them in the same box that holds all my ashes. So that when those future archaeologists excavate the columbarium where my ashes are interred, they'll have another mystery on their hands. <laughs> this is one boy who plans to make his mama proud. <laughs> so join everyone for the celebration and come to my graduation party in order to celebrate life and hope. Are you ready to party? Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.